My name is Mel Tori Franca and welcome to a new series I'm starting here at Lost Island Press where I meet with authors to answer the questions you have about writing, editing, and publishing. Today we're chatting with Haley Hansen, author of World Diver, which is a science fantasy novel that came out super recently, literally this month on April 20th. So congratulations, Haley. One thing that really stood out to me about Haley's story is the fact that she used to be a teacher before deciding to pursue writing full time. And we're about to find out why she decided to make that switch. Thanks for meeting with me. I know you've yeah, no been problem. really busy considering you just launched your book last week. Yes, I did. <laughs> How has that been? <laughs> it's been really fantastic. I, I expected it would probably be fine, but it sort of exceeded my expectations, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. This is your first book, right? Yes, my first book. It's a uh, YA science fantasy. So, um, it has a lot of fantasy elements, but also a lot of science fiction elements. It's a little bit of a cross genre. So I was stalking your website the other day. And oh, okay. <laughs> I saw that you were a previously an elementary school teacher. And yes. I thought it'd be really cool if we could just talk about how long you've been writing and at what point you decided that it was something that you wanted to pursue as more than just a side hobby to your, your main career. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been writing... Gosh, a long time. I, I started writing when I was a teenager just for fun, just kind of as a escapist kind of thing. Um, instead of writing about my real life in journals, I wrote stories. Um, mm -hmm. And I did that. Gosh, I did that well into my 20s. We were um, informed by my husband's job that he was going to be sent overseas um, to work in Japan for a couple of years. So I was kind of forced to decide if I wanted to continue teaching and finding a teaching job overseas um, or if I wanted to kind of take a break and step back and um, reassess what I um, really wanted out of you know, my career while we were over there, um, I kind of started thinking about, well, maybe I should write as more than just a hobby. You know, you have kind of a little bit more time to think about those things. I think when all of a sudden you're not, you know, in the grind of, oh, I have to get up and I have to go and do the teaching job every day. And I, I just kind of had some time to think about it. And so um, I pulled out one of my old manuscripts that was World Diver and started working on it again. You know, I, I wasn't sure about if I could, you know, pursue traditional publication with it. I, I was just not certain that there would be anybody who's, you know, willing to take it on or if there's even a market for it. Because it, it was kind of a really strange, um, like, like it didn't fit into a neat genre. I worked on that for a couple of years and um, I decided to go pitch it at conference and... Uh, the rest is kind of history. So. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So this was an old manuscript that you were working on from when you were yeah, younger? Yeah, I originally, um, I originally wrote it in 2011. Okay. Yeah, so it was, it was an older manuscript that I had kind of not forgotten about, but just I sort of put it on the back burner and I'd always loved it and I always thought it was great, but I was just kind of like, you know, working on a whole bunch of different stuff in the meantime, just, you know, for fun. And this was kind of the one that I always kept coming back to. When you were younger, cause you were writing as a high schooler, was the idea of pursuing a career in writing even on your radar at all? Or did you have a passion for teaching at the time? It was not on my radar. I actually, at the time, wanted to go into um, counseling when I was in high school. And then I got to college and I decided um, or discovered, I should say, that I really liked working um, with kids. And so I decided to kind of switch gears and um, pursue teaching. Um, which I did for about seven and a half, almost eight years. And writing was always just something that I loved and I was passionate about. Um, but at the time, I didn't really think that um, I could make it a career just because my um, parents were always like, oh, you know, obviously you're, you know, you love this and you're kind of talented at it. But why don't you, you know, quote unquote, go get a real job. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that was something that I, I think was really ingrained in me when I was a teenager. And so it, it kind of just made it where it was not even on my radar. And I think that if it were me today talking to me back then, I would tell her, you know, no, you can do this. This is something you definitely can do. And if you really love it and you're passionate about it, then you should, you should pursue that. I definitely relate to that because there's a lot of pressure to pursue, I guess, a more stable career. And right you know, artists and writers are kind of looked down upon by these, mm -hmm. the, the traditional path. And I think it's really challenging, especially if you tend to be a good student as well. Yeah. Where, you know, you're capable of pursuing these 
more legit jobs. So why don't you yeah. do something that's better <laughs> than writing? <laughs> right. No, I, that was exactly, exactly my situation. I was a very capable student. I could have applied to any kind of major program that I wanted to in college. And so it was sort of like, oh, what do I actually do? You know, <laughs> it was, and my parents were kind of like, oh, well, why don't you go ahead and, you know, you know, this pays bills. <laughs> it's something that I think is not necessarily terrible advice because you, you do have to like, you know, obviously be the adult and pay bills and all of that stuff. But, mm-hmm. but I think you can make that thing writing for you, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So how has your family and friends reacted now that you've kind of made the switch? <laughs> They've been really supportive. They are like in love with the book and they're in love with the story and they think it's super fun. So yeah, it's, it's been really fun to see their reaction. When you first made that decision, what were you feeling at the time? Like, were you scared of the idea of transitioning to a full-time writer or were you relieved? Did it just feel right? I felt really good about it. Like I was mm-hmm. definitely on the right path of what I was supposed to be doing with, you know, my career at that point. So it wasn't a huge question, but there's also a lot of fear. I think whenever you're doing mm-hmm. something that big and that scary. You already had a career established for yourself. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it wasn't like you were making this choice right before, you know, am I going to college or not? You had already gone through the entire path yeah. and was switching <laughs> yeah. off. So yeah, that's definitely a big decision. <laughs> it was not an easy one, but it felt right. It was just, there, there was a lot of fear um, with that for sure. Like, um, like, oh gosh, what if I just fall flat on my face and, and it, you know, is, is just a, like a huge fail, but um and, and I thought for a while it was going to be that way. <laughs> um, you know, I pitched this for probably about a year. I got no, I, I got a couple of like, oh, it's a cool concept, but I don't think it's right for my list kind of thing. I kind of was ready to shelve it actually. And then um, oh, wow. I, it was like a long shot, but I sent it to the publisher that I'm with now. I, I had talked to their acquisitions manager in um, a hotel hallway just briefly and kind of, um, informally pitched it to her and she's like oh that's a really cool concept why don't you send in your stuff and so I I did and then I didn't hear anything for a long time and I thought oh they they just must hate it they must not you know want anything to do with it and then um, finally I got an email that said you know oh well we would like the full um, so why don't you send it in and I was like oh gosh okay <laughs> yeah they they just really liked it they felt it was a good fit so it perseverance definitely yeah. was key That's awesome. (laughs) Congrats. And I think your story is really motivating, not just for the people who are, you know, scared about pursuing a career in writing as high school Mm -hmm. students, but also for people who have already gone into another field and are reconsidering whether that was the right choice for them. Mm -hmm. Um, So do you have any advice for people who are, you know, maybe interested in pursuing a career in writing, but are just scared or they have these preconceptions about whether or not they can actually make a living doing it? I would say if it's something that you're passionate about and you really want to do it, then I think that you should, but you also need to do the work. You need to learn craft. You need to write a lot. (laughs) You need to read a lot. (laughs) You need to network with other writers. Um, you know, like you're doing with me right now, um, you know, reaching out saying, Hey, I, I'd love to talk to you. Like that's all important stuff to be, you know, doing on your, your path to your, your dream career. And a friend of mine said it once really good the other day, I think, um, she said, the person who is going to be the change agent in your career might be a person that you've already met and you just don't know it. Making sure that you, you know, form connections with people. I think it's easy to think that writing is a really lonely career. And in some ways it is. Um, Nobody's name goes on the book, but yours. And largely you are alone writing in your writing cave, wherever that is, whether that's, you know, (laughs) you know, at your favorite coffee shop or your, your bedroom or your living room or just wherever. And this is what I always like to tell people who want to have a writing career is, um, you know, find your people that are going to walk this Mm -hmm. journey with you because it's going to make it so much easier when you have those rejections and those failures, because, you know, you're going to have them. It's, it, it's going to happen. You're going to get a really bad review and someone's just going to like, you know, light up your book on Goodreads or whatever. It, it's mm-hmm. just, you know, it's going to happen. So finding your people and sticking with your people and supporting each other is um, one of the biggest 
pieces of advice that I can give to people who are just starting out. Yeah, that's amazing advice. I feel like meeting other writers and making those connections Mm -hmm. is something that's really overlooked. Um, Mm -hmm. I actually started getting involved with the writing community when I was around 12 years old, just through social media and a blog, a teen author blog Mm -hmm. at the time. And I honestly don't think I would be writing today if I didn't have, you know, the encouragement from all of my, you know, online writer friends. Mm -hmm. So that's really incredible advice. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will definitely take that to heart. Hopefully. I mean, that, (laughs) that was one of the biggest things for me was just finding the people, you know, who are, who are going to be supportive and, and they have been largely the same people throughout, you know, the entire time so far. It's definitely really important. All right. I think that's a good note to end this on, but thank you so much for meeting with me today. <laughs> this is Yeah, fun. no problem. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I got to talk to you face to face. That's kind of so rare nowadays. I think like, I know. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try to have the video out this Saturday, so I'll send you a okay. link then. <laughs> thank you so oh, much. Perfect. That sounds great. No, thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you're watching this video and you're afraid to pursue writing as a career, whether you're still a student or you're already established in another field, I hope that this video motivates you and helps you decide what the right choice is for you. Thank you so much for being here on the Lost Island Press channel, and I will see you in the next video.